the 28th of April 1992, one of the proudest traditions in English football was revived. It was the day Burnley came back as champions. John Deere is equalised. Happy days are here again. Eddie Cliff, a short inside for West. Shooting chance. Casper now. Oh, that's a good shot. A beautiful goal. This club's been in the fourth division seven years, and it's, and it's, it's that's a long time for a club of this standing. And um, one can never make any promises, but uh, hopefully that uh, now that we set the ball rolling, maybe we can keep it going. One point will be enough. We've played about three minutes of stoppage time now. Here goes Mike Conroy. Still time for a winner, maybe. It's a terrific run. John Francis! to York in their thousands, they're going home as champions. 1898, 1921, 1960, 1973, 1982. Everyone a Turf Moor Championship year. They've had plenty of practice polishing silverware at Burnley, and 1992 brought a new trophy for the cabinet. The number one team with a number one support. A brand new start under a brand new manager. This is the story of how the championship race was won. Lap one, August, in sunny Donny. Well, not the best of passes forward, and uh, probably Paul Crichton's. Of all people, there's Billy Whitehurst, more associated with forward than uh, backward play. But a neat turn of foot from the big fella. Here's Eli. Not short of a neat bit of work either. Still Eli, he might go all the way, just caught by Whitehurst and that's a penalty. No doubt at all in the mind of David Shadwell, the referee. Eli in the clear, Whitehurst catches him, penalty. Mike Conroy, penalty expert. Chance to give Burnley the lead, which he does. 1-0. Rankin will get a second chance. Not a bad ball in either. It's broken off Marriott. Real chance. Noteman and it's one each. Well, Marriott was really unlucky. Just broke off him. Suddenly, Noteman with a real opportunity. One each. Bennett shaping to shoot. And he does so. And it was a good effort. Billy Whitehurst, always strong in the challenge, just falling to the ground. And with, well, was that a drag back with a hand? If it is, he's in some trouble. And Whitehurst isn't going to wait to see the card. Booked in the first half, deliberate handball in the second. But Billy Whitehurst, who just lost his footing, used his hand there. towards Eli, it'll break for Harper, easy, completely unmarked Steve Harper, and Burnley are in front. Patient stuff from Burnley, and the ball forward, he's onside, Yates, what a chance this for a 3-1 lead, and he takes it oh so coolly, and the game's won now. Eli, still Eli battling away, Conroy gets the final touch, is it over the line? It is, and Burnley complete her out, 4-1. Conroy enjoyed that one, just getting there before Eli, and that's over the line. September started with a bang and ended with a whimper. Roger Eli provided the dynamite, letting off the club's first league hat-trick in more than six seasons. Chesterfield is helpless victims at Turf Moor. It's broken for Conroy. Eli's in there. 1-0. He had a look for a flag. Non-waving. Time to celebrate. Came off for uh, Williams. Conroy on for Francis. Clever stuff. 
would have been some goal. Conroy. Eli, not by Bryant, but not for long. He's so strong. Roger Eli, good save, Leonard. He won't stop that one. 2 0. It's come through to Francis. Deflected and in. John Francis makes it three. No, Roger Eli celebrating. And I think that means Eli's hat trick. He's claiming it, you know. Three straight league wins had lifted Burnley amongst the high flyers. Only their next opponent's crew were above them. So when John Francis nudged the Clarets in front, they were commanding top billing. But David Hamilton had one of those days in what was one of those seasons for him. A collector's own goal to equalise. He was later red carded in the bargain. Don't know who they're congratulating. The main contenders were already shaping up. But Burnley didn't collect another point in September. They finished the month in 11th place and looking for a manager. Looking for a goalkeeper was a season-long adventure. On September the 21st, Andy Marriott of Nottingham Forest on loan to Burnley, lined up against David Williams of Burnley on loan to Rochdale. Not surprisingly, one or two wires got crossed. Both Reeves and Jones are forward for Rochdale. That's in for Jones. Good reactions from Marriott. He's getting better by the match. Came off Brown, Pender climbing well, Conroy, Francis, couldn't quite reach it. Jones smashed it away. There was a muted penalty appeal there. Just a suggestion of handball on the line. Deary, out to Francis. Oh, that's a beauty, and Williams just touched it away from Conroy. Francis, it's a bit too hot for Graham to handle. He only knows one way, John Francis. Who didn't quite make the most of the opening he made. He's mustard though, isn't he? That's searching out Whitehall. It's a problem for Hardy and Mollington. Oh, very nearly a big problem for Mollington. Nearly an own goal. Just over 20 minutes remaining. Deary, a loose one. Farrell caught by Jones and Flounders seats in. Andy Flounders for Rochdale. Andy Marriott almost kept it out, but Burnley behind. Conroy. This is Eli. Not long left. Cross looking for Conroy, good save Williams, and Graham away. Well, what a way to treat your teammates. David Williams has the final say with a flying save. At Scarborough the following Saturday, Burnley suffered a third straight defeat. It was only the home team's second win of the season. Adrian Mayer's early goal set the tone for the afternoon. But there was a silver lining to the cloud. The performance of 18-year-old Graham Lancashire let loose on the fourth division because John Francis was suspended and marking his full debut with a veteran's finish. A starter for five in his next three games. But this game quickly ran away from the Lancashire lads. Jules set up Mooney to give Scarra the lead again soon after. And despite the dismissal of Mark Ash soon after half-time, the home team extended their lead in the second half when even Andy Marriott's good hands allowed Ash Dijan a bad goal. The repercussions were bad for Burnley. Mid-table, and as if that wasn't enough, Blackpool on top. Four days after the defeat at Scarborough, Burnley were making all the headlines. Frank Casper resigned as manager on October the 2nd. He came to Turf Moor in the late 60s. He certainly left Burnley a much better club for his loyal contributions as player, coach and manager. But as one era drew to a close, another began. Jimmy Mullen, Casper's assistant, wasn't everybody's idea of the ideal candidate until he won his first eight games in charge. He never doubted he was made of the right stuff and he began his caretaker stint intent on proving it, and quickly. Carlisle were first to suffer, skipper John Pender, again anchoring a four-man defence, turning attacker to head his first goal for the club. The new shape of the team gave it a more solid look. And then there was Lanky, 
The teenage rampage continued in the second half thanks to some benevolent defending and some hungry attacking. Graham Lancashire had well and truly arrived. And those who were planning a trip to Wrexham the following weekend ain't seen nothing yet. Well, Wrexham started brightly enough in these opening two minutes or so. And Burnley are in some trouble here and there's Gordon Davis. And the bright opening leads to an early goal. Forward. Eli's there. Up go the heads. Just breaks towards Owen. And there's Deary. Still Deary. Good effort, good save. Lancashire. Three and three for Lancashire. The effort came from Deary originally. He did awfully well to keep his balance. O'Keefe did well with the save. But that's the goal poacher's instinct. Slits. And he handballed it too, but the referees wave play on. And this is a real opening now for Eli. Roger Eli loves to run at players. Has a man over to his right in Harper. And in two minutes, it's gone from 1-0 down to 2-1 up for Burnley. Steve Harper took his time. And it's through the legs. Burnley really keeping this pressure up. Davis. Just managed to get it away by Beaumont. But Davis with another opportunity and Lancashire on the line. It's getting easier for Lancashire. And easier for Burnley. 3-1 now. Eli again the target. And that's Lancashire. Oh my word, what a way to get a hat-trick. Graham Lancashire makes it 4-1. And if you didn't know, the scoreboard tells you. Goal. Nice skill from Thackeray. Here's Watkin. That's neat play too. Wrexham haven't given up. And they're going to go into the break. Just two down. Andy Priest, 4 2. Pendron Davis making the runs. And there's Davis. 5 2. And Burnley are comfortable now. France has done well there. Another opportunity now. Here's Eli. Did he use his hand? No, he didn't. Chance for six. It's 6-2 to Burnley. And Jimmy Mullen sends the message. I want the job. Oh, yes. And there was more, much more. All of a sudden, all the smart money was Mullen money. Six days after the six-goal bash at Wrexham, Jimmy was confirmed as Burnley's new manager. He proceeded to make the best start of any new manager in the club's history. The board had found themselves a winner. Jimmy had found himself a goal scorer. Graham Lancashire was the talk of the county. He celebrated his 19th birthday with another goal against Walsall. Call it beginner's luck, but Lanky had the happy knack of being in the right place at the wrong time for defences. Through injury and suspension this year, he had to be brought into the squad. And um, since he's come in, he's, he's responded in the best possible way. He scored six goals in four games. No inhibitions, has he? Or it doesn't seem no, to have, he's anyway. A, he's a cocky little so-and-so as he says yeah. uh, he just enjoys putting the ball in the back of the net and that's a that's an asset you can't give anyone which is the best goal you've scored so far uh definitely my third at Wrexham that was that was incredible I mean did were you aiming for the top corner yeah or what? I just had a quick look and took a swing and it was went in against Halifax um I were actually um, walking out with the two teams were walking out and I actually followed the Halifax um, team out to, the, to their end. Then, you know, when I noticed, like, I just um, was so embarrassed. I managed just to um, sneak back into our end. Nobody at Burnley had anything to be embarrassed about in November. The months haul seven wins and one draw. The prize scalp, Mansfield Town on the ninth. Harper. Only as far as Spooner. Fee. Oh, that was a loose and lazy one. What can Burnley make of it? Deary. Oh, that's a peach of a pass for Francis. Now can he make the most of it? Was that a trip? Francis still on his feet, but he's got his penalty. Jason Piercy may not like it, but he just made contact with Francis. Mike Conroy sent it the wrong way. Burnley ahead in seven minutes. Came off Deary. Jacob, 
This is Holland, though. Wilkinson. Stant. Wilkinson. Neatly done. Oh, good goal. Mansfield on terms with a gem of a goal. Carr. Looking for Stant. Looking for Holland. Breaking from deep. Beautifully engineered. Ten minutes of the second half gone. Jacob looking for Davis. Burnley back in front. Steve Davis just beating the keeper to the punch. Wilkinson out to Ford. That's a tester. Pender up to it. Holland. Oh, Davis and Pender in each other's way and paying the price. Steve Wilkinson's second goal, Mansfield's second equaliser, and how often do you see Steve Davis and John Pender on different wavelengths? Fleming's header, Stant, Ford. Oh, France caught out, Spooner, great save. Marriott deserved his luck. Ford's corner. Oh, Davis and Deary getting all mixed up. Stant off the line by Jacob. Goodness only knows how. Phil Stant's shot looked unstoppable to everyone but the amazing Joe Jacob. There are just six minutes remaining. Jacob swung in towards Pender. It's Captain Fantastic. John Pender with what's surely the winning goal. Mike Conroy thinks so anyway. 3-2. There were nearly 12,000 at Turf Moor to see Mansfield removed from top spot. At Maidstone, Burnley moved a little closer to the top themselves, thanks to Roger Eli's persistence and the nerveless penalty-taking of Mike Conroy. Signed from Reading for a paltry £35,000, Conroy had emerged as the Burnley goal machine. But Burnley's goal stopper was off. Not even a bit of around £150,000 could persuade Nottingham Forest to part company with Andy Marriott, who made himself happily at home at Turf Moor. The talent that Burnley had unearthed was paraded on the big stage in the spring when Marriott kept goal in two Wembley finals. A loser with Forest in the Rumbelows final, he was a winner in each of his last 11 games with Burnley. His farewell appearance was at Northampton on November the 30th. Conroy's in a good position. Mike Conroy, great effort. What a goal. Burnley strike with a perfect counter-attack. A terrific run by John Francis. A wonderful strike by Mike Conroy. Bevan making himself available and using the ball well. Johnson are getting through, but can they get into that penalty area? Nice move here. Too optimistic from Bell, not enough width from Campbell, and it's the speed merchant, John Francis again, against Quo. Now against to Phil Shard, and Francis is by him. Francis with a shot, and gracious me, that was a good tackle by uh, Johnson as Eli came in. Great move. Francis past Quo, takes on Shard. Now he's got space to knock it and go, which he does, then scoops one across the face of the goal. Johnson comes in just in time. Johnson. Time for Bell to hold it. Adcock calls for the ball over the top. This is for Adcock. Knocked down to Campbell. What a great goal. And one they thoroughly deserve. Well, that was copybook stuff. Adcock calling for it. A beautiful ball from Bell. Adcock knows exactly what he's going to do. And in comes Campbell onto it. And that's into the roof of the net, and it's 1-1. So five minutes before the end, Northampton draw level. Campbell getting the, the knock on. Here comes Conroy. The danger now is that they'll be caught on the counter-attack as Northampton look for the winner. It's Harper knocking one into the middle, and uh, here's a chance here for Conroy to make it 2-1. And that was the sucker punch. You could see that one coming from the moment Northampton committed too many players forward. Harper gets down the left-hand side. 
and unselfishly knocks it into the middle. There's a lot of players supporting, not much marking, and Mike Conroy has a lot of time to get his second and really bury this one for Burnley. Jimmy Mullen was named manager of the month, and no wonder. Burnley, unbeaten since he assumed command, were just two points off the title pace again. A new month usually meant a new goalkeeper. Chris Pearce was back at the start of December. Burnley's winning run came to an end one short of the club record of 10 set nearly 80 years earlier. Scunthorpe with the party poopers, behind to an Andy Farrell goal in the first half, succeeding where Roger Eli couldn't, and then letting everybody know about it. Scunthorpe equalised in the last 20 minutes. Well, Burnley did it for them. John Pender got the fatal touch to the corner. 12 days later, the unbeaten run came to an end against Rotherham. Once we started going on the unbeaten run, I think we went 17 games without getting beat. And uh, once Christmas was over with, the top of the league just still with a chance. And we just kept plugging away and fortunately enough, kept consistency going right through the end of the season. The Boxing Day defeat by Rotherham was swiftly erased from Turf Moor memories by victory over Doncaster two days later. Here's Francis, just run away from him but broke for Eli, and here's Conroy on the overlap, just wide, good effort from Conroy. Always dangerous from the set piece Burnley, Pender was in there, Davis was in there, in by Conroy some ways, just got hold of it and in the end it's smuggled away. Here's Francis, done well. Chance for Burnley to break. Here's Roger Eli. Conroy racing up from the back. Davis is there too. Now then, chance for Conroy. Can he keep his head? There's your answer. The goal scorer extraordinaire. Lovely ball from Randall. John Francis. Always looks to cut in from that left side with that lovely balance and the right foot. And there's Conroy. Eli! Dear me, I think Eli will wonder how he missed that. Conroy snapshot, Samway's the save, and well, maybe a little bit of credit to defender Ashurst. Onside. Real chance for Farrell. Just keeps his footing, and it's off the line as Eli came in. Jacob forward, now then Eli at pace, Conroy had a one-on-one -on -one and took his opportunity and Eli has a one-on-one -on -one and does the same and that's how much he enjoyed it. That's one of the goals that I, um, I quite um, enjoyed this season, I think um, actually Matt Conroy set it on to me and um, I just see, saw the keeper coming out to me and just managed to chip, uh, chip the ball over the keeper, yeah I enjoyed that. Jacob into Francis, Francis is ball in, it'll sit up here for Farrell, it'll break for Conroy, oh great save from Samways, that was brave. Francis. Oh, what a lovely turn and cross, here's Eli, still Eli, oh Conroy took it off him and maybe he shouldn't have done, just wide though. Doncaster even having problems getting the ball out their own half and if they pass like that they're going to struggle even more. Here's Lancashire, still Lancashire. Oh goodness me, that was nearly one of the goals of the season. He is a confident young man. Conroy just run away from him and then hit him. And here's Francis. Still, it's going to go all the way Francis. Just delays too long I think and wins the corner. Certainly being very careful about this, Doncaster, and that's the result. Kevin Noteman, what a beautiful goal that was. They certainly were deliberate, and you can't stop shots like that. Entering January, Burnley were not only occupying top notch, they were playing some top notch football. The thousands who followed them away from Turf Moor were getting double value. At Chesterfield on New Year's Day, John Deary gave them an early lead en route to a club record seventh consecutive away win, a record that had stood for more than 70 years. As with the Doncaster game, it was all done and dusted inside 25 minutes, thanks to John Francis's seventh of the season, 
and he was only fourth in the Burnley scoring list. Seven straight away league wins, including cup ties, Burnley had won nine in a row on the road. The goals against column was the key to the record. But it hadn't spared Chris Pearce to chop again. 33-year-old Mark Kendler arrived on loan from Swansea to displace him at the turn of the year. But goalkeeper number three lasted only three games. At Blackpool on January the 11th, the heavens opened on Kendall. Burnley's away day joyride came off the rails with their heaviest defeat in four years. Kendall took a share of the blame for Blackpool's two first half goals from Tony Rodwell and Dylan Kerr. A lion's share of the blame for that sad second. But the Clarets launched a second half recovery package. When Eli got in behind Stoneman midway through the half, Mike Conroy scored the goal that they'd been threatening since the restart. And hopes were high again. But two minutes later, Blackpool scored again. The sea air seemed to go to the heads of a defence that was the solid cornerstone for a season of achievement. Andy Garner found them very much out of season, and Blackpool were 3-1 up. It was a day of one step forward, two steps back for Burnley. Again, they moved into recovery range. Francis making it 3-2. Come on, boys. But this time, it took Blackpool all of three minutes to take charge again. Four marks to Garner still running on a full tank in the closing stages and ushering the inevitable day bamber forward to close Burnley out. It had been an unhappy return to Bloomfield Road for Jimmy Mullen on the receiving end of an earful from some of the Seasiders' less fun-loving fans and on the receiving end of a 5-2 hiding from his old team. His latest goalkeeper hadn't done himself justice. Kendall was returned to Swansea and after another abortive move for Marriott and an aborted trial for Luton's Australian keeper Andy Pedersen, transfer listed Chris Pearce returned against Gillingham. Davis looking long. Clark's back there. Lim's coming to claim it. Now he's off limits. This is where panic sets in. Straight to Farrell. That's the ball. Conroy, take that. Lim won't go wandering again for a while. Farrell, Francis, Misham arriving like an express train. Great cross, oh, and Mike Conroy really should have put the ball where he is now. Conroy's header. Martin wanting too much time, this is John Francis. Walker in the way, Deary, it'll come for Conroy. Chances. Not the best of headers from Conroy. Or Pierce's punch. Chance for Walker. And another. And Gillingham skipper Alan Walker has equalised. I must say, I think Chris Pierce may just have been nudged as he jumped by Lovell. He did well to recover and make a stop, but Walker got a reprieve. Oh, here's Graham Lancashire running free. Very promising. Conroy! Well, he is getting closer, I suppose. Wonder who he's supporting. Francis. Headed by Clark, away by Dempsey. Back in by Jacob. Lancashire! Oh, unlucky. The control on the chest deserved a goal. Keeper Lim did really well to deny him. Jacob's free kick. Steve Davis! Woodwork in the way. That one's heading for Pender. Conroy! There's only a matter of time. 64 minutes gone. And at last, Mike Conroy puts Bernie back in front. Conroy down, Randall arriving at speed, just lost track of Harper, Clark, didn't look, Randall, Francis, what was that, Randall, Adrian Randall, from the most curious assist from John Francis, no wonder he's so happy. This is Harper now, Got men ahead of him, Jacob, Conroy, good control, good finish, good hat-trick. 
Not sure where the keeper was. Not sure Mike Conroy will care. Yeah, Joe Jackal played it in from the left and uh, I took it on the chest, turned the centre half and managed to, the goalkeeper, I don't know where the goalkeeper was, but uh, he was out of position at the time and I just managed to get there in front of the centre half and put it in. It's been my first uh, hat-trick in English football and uh, I hope it's the first of many. Conroy's total was 17 and rising. He started February with five more in as many games. At Walsall in the first of them, he scored four minutes from time to pilfer a point from a two-all draw. A winner against Lincoln a week later put Burnley five clear. Three days after that, Bernie put five past Northampton at Turf Moor. Up goes Conroy. Flick from Eli, flick from Francis. And now Deary's in the clear. Well, I don't know how much of that they intended to flick on, but in the end, Deary was in the clear. Let's look at it again. Pretty deliberate, I think so was that. But one thing's for certain, once in the clear, Deary knew just what he was doing. allowing Francis to release Eli and he's got the pace he's got the finish he's got the goal 2-0 thank you John says Eli forward by Davis Conroy on the chase and he's got the pace to outdo Quo has he got the finish oh yes he has confidence oozing from Mike Conroy 3-0 Francis. Well, that's a lovely cross inviting in Harper, and it's exhibition stuff now. No wonder they're delighted. Pretty clear, but not far. Burnley still well on top. Francis, Conroy, Francis, wonderful goal. 5 0, five different scorers. And each goal exhibits a different quality. This is what makes managers smile. One, two, as good as that. And a finish as good as that. Away from home, Burnley were putting on a series of late, late shows. Patience was becoming the chief virtue of the travelling fam. At Scunthorpe, they were two down at half-time. Ian Helliwell with the first. The second, six minutes later, just as untidy, a little more unfortunate. Pierce had a punch at it. Alexander had a swing at it. Scorer Jason White just waited around for the ball to reach him. But Lady Luck pulled on a yellow shirt for the second half. Within a minute of the restart, referee John Kirby awarded Burnley a penalty. Roger Eli, looking to tame Steve Harper's cross, was upended by Stuart Hicks. It looked a little harsh, but on closer scrutiny, Hicks didn't get a foot on the ball. Mike Conroy did, though. His penalty halved the deficit and launched the rescue bid amidst rising temperatures. Boiling point was reached after 63 minutes. Scunthorpe's debutant on loan keeper Chris Marples didn't care for Conroy's eager attentions when the Burnley hitman typically set off after a lost cause. Conroy was caught in the face and Marples was facing an unscheduled departure. In fairness to the keeper, his head cracked against the hoardings. He was entitled to feel annoyed, but he wasn't entitled to show it. Conroy did get a yellow card, Marples a red. Dave Hill got the keeper's jersey and kept Burnley at arm's length until the fifth minute of injury time. Finally, fatefully, they equalised. Steve Davis, big enough to sort things out. It was the proverbial hard-earned point, with Pender now facing suspension and four key men added to the injury list. Jimmy Mullen was again trying to add a goalkeeper to his title cocktail. Nicky Walker, who played for Rangers in the mid-80s, arrived from Hearts on loan for a debut against Blackpool. There were more than 18,000 at Turf Moor for the fourth division's game of the season. First versus second, the leadership at stake. Davis for Blackpool. Bamba in for Groves. Offside is he. Yes, Paul Groves' goal wiped out. Groves. Bamba's found himself some space. Couldn't find the finish though. Comfortable save for Walker, really. But Blackpool have settled the quicker. Jacob trying to settle Burnley down. 
Not like that, though. This is Mike Davis. Bamba on for Garda. Great chance. Past the keeper and past the post. Roger Eli. Bricks can't get to him. Neither can Groves. Roger Eli going on and on and in. It's a Roger Eli special. He just wouldn't be denied. He made his own luck there. And what a finish. Ez. Away by Pender. This is Gap, though. Trevor Sinclair with a chance to make his mark. He's done well. Bamba! Who else? Dave Bamba equalises. Burnley were in front for just over a minute. He's a master of being first. Long for Mike Conroy, who goes in trouble. Conroy! Off the line by Briggs. Davis with a free kick. Pender getting in the way. Then Davis. Then Dirio, he's missed it. Ayres, Bamba, Garner, Davis in the way, Bamba, nothing doing. They shall not pass. Away by Davis. Oh, and Bamba's got goal side of John Pender here. Dave Bamba, oh, great tackle by Pender. Uh, we know what we've got to do. Uh, we'll continue to do what we've done since November and, or October and uh, hopefully that will be enough to, to guarantee what we're looking for. But March began with Burnley's worst display of the season. A 3-0 defeat at Gillingham cost them the leadership. They didn't lose another game all month. Jacob with a corner. Usual targets are up for him and there's one of those targets, Steve Davis. How many times have Burnley scored from the set-piece corner? at Conroy, got a little bit of a touch, Deary, second chance maybe, good save, good save from Phillips. Away by Pender, further away by John Francis, back helping, now here's Ball with a chance, good save by Walker. Conroy, still going, releases Francis, he'll keep it on. Reflection on the cross, but Conroy's got to it, and Phillips has got to it. Fine save. Lovely ball, Francis. There's time now for Misham. It was in towards Eli, but I think it hit Barnett in front of him. Lovely skill from Randall. Still Randall. Broken for Deary. Cooley done. 3-0. Points for Burnley. With John Pender restored after a brief suspension, Burnley had the cornerstone around which to build their final effort. His second half goal polished off Halifax. And although they temporarily lost the leadership, they were in the mood to topple Mansfield Town when they travelled to Field Mill the following Saturday. Uh, you know, we're top of the table, I think they're second or third, and it, you know, there was only one goal in it, and it's, uh, it's happened already a few times this season. It happens like that, you know, you get two good teams and they, they wipe each other out and it's hard to score goals in games like that. One goal was quite enough, and quite deserved on the day. It arrived four minutes before the break from a familiar source. Mike Conroy became the first Burnley player since Willie Irvin 25 years earlier to score 20 league goals, and he wasn't finished. Nicky Walker's loan period was, though, and for the fifth time during the season, Chris Pearce was handed a recall for the home game with Maidstone United in which Robbie Painter made his debut against the club he was with 36 hours earlier. Jacob with the corner. Looking for Pender. This foot held on. Deary. Oh, that's a peach of a pass. Right on the nail for Conroy. Oxbrow making it difficult for him. Got it across and hit the post. Deflected, I think. Stebbing out to Smalley, knocked in towards Lillis. Farrell's there, but he's lost it. Henry in game pursuit, it'll come for Newman. Good finish, Mason in front. First minutes of the second half, 
Wyvern Henry chase it down for Newman, but Burnley really should have had it clear before all this. Frustration growing. Farrell. Came off Eli. This is John Deary. Promising. Very promising. Good effort by John Deary. Smooth mover. And a shot hit so hard that it flew away off Hesford. Farrell with a free kick. He'll get another chance. Lifted towards Pender. Davis. Great chance. Good save. Lovely little step by Steve Davis to make the opening. But nothing will go for Burnley. And now just 13 minutes remaining. Burnley beaten twice at home in the league all season. Davis! Last the equaliser. It's been some time coming. They were all jockeying for position in the box, and Steve Davis found position A. Ellis trying to help out, but he's helped it into the path of Roger Eli. Mason have got reinforcements on the scene very quickly. He's got his cross in, and Mike Conroy was in a whisker of converting it. Deary. That's in towards Yates. This is Eli. He's done it. Roger Eli with three minutes to spare. That's got to be the winner. And down to the two substitutes. Yates and then Eli. Now Burnley have got to keep their concentration. Oh, chance for Lillis. No way through. What a scramble. All piling in, it's boiled over. And no wonder at this stage. But where's the ball? Don't worry, Chris Pierce has got it. Maidson's Liber Henry had tried just a little too hard to halt Burnley's progress and saw red. Eli's late winners saw the Clarets go five points clear at the top, and more significantly, six points ahead of Rotherham in fourth place. The main objective is to get promotion. That's the be all and end all, uh, is to get up there and, and get out of this division. And if we can do that as quickly as we can in the next two, three games, then we'll have a couple of games, then maybe we can go and uh, have a go for the championship. Burnley already had the division's champion support, average attendances up to five figures in April. There was a black market for Burnley's remaining fixtures. Everybody wanted to see them. Two at Turf Moor in the space of three days held the key, they were followed by three in a row on the road. Jimmy Mullen's Claret and Blue Army were on alert for the final push, starting with Scarborough at Turf Moor. This has come for this one. Didn't get the telling of touch. Gabbiadini and a wave off the line by Jacob. Gabbiadini almost giving Scarborough the lead. Jacob. Francis, with skill, he's away now if he's got the chance. Plays it instead to Eli. Eli to Conroy, super save. And it needed to be. Eli got away, Conroy to the near post. Ford did well. The tackle from Davis. Nice ball from Farrell, releasing Conroy. Looking for support, Eli, super goal, 1-0. And Eli knew the part Conroy had played in it. Lovely header. Here's Painter, chance to stretch the legs. He's certainly not bad at that. Thought about going all the way for a minute, Conroy leaves it. Eli, another chance maybe. Francis, didn't quite get enough on it. Stations a little there at the back for Scarborough, and here's Ian Meesham. The turn from Eli, good shot, good save. Ford did well, but how well did Eli do? Took it in his stride, turned immediately. That's a super reaction save. 
Davis again comes for it, doesn't get a telling enough touch on it. Ball in, Hurst, Gabbiadini maybe, it's in the net. Gabbiadini might claim it, Hurst got the final touch I think. But whatever happened, it's one all. And it's gone all the way and Ford had to be alert. Unite, holding off mud. Now he's outpaced him. Deary, another good save from Ford. How well has he played this afternoon? Now it's a break for Deary. Conroy, look for Deary again, I think. Harper arriving, good shot, and guess who's there again? And towards Conroy. Hans is surrounded. There's no way through that time. Oh, now then, Misham, he's done awfully well. Picks up Penda! Great chance, and I don't think he could believe that he'd reached him. The Scarborough game was Chris Pierce's last of a curious season for Burnley goalkeepers, all five of them. Three came and went on loan, and eventually David Williams, who started the campaign as Pierce's understudy, was drafted in to help Burnley get the last few points. So, including the Cardiff City game tonight, the mathematics are simple. starting the day back on top and with the chance to take a giant stride back towards the third division Jimmy Mullard will have mapped out the priorities for them you can be sure of that Ooh, Francis has kept that in Bellamy didn't expect him he's got away with it here's Misham though Conroy Painter 16 seconds Burnley in front Robbie Painter before his manager had even got to his seat I think Conroy saw them a deliberate dummy. Yes, he did. And Robbie Painter gobbled up his first for the club. Newton. This is Griffith. Good work by uh, Cohen Griffith. Very good work. Very, very good work. He's found Dale, too. And he's done well. Wood Miller couldn't quite get a touch. Blake, and he's popped in the equaliser. Conroy. Farrell. Beesham square of him. Into Conroy. Farrell. They're back in front. And now gone, and Burnley retake the lead with a fine goal by Andy Farrell. Came to him at an awkward height too. Corner by Jacob. Flicked by Conroy. Headed by Pender, just kept out. Conroy! 3-1. Mike Conroy gives Burnley some breathing space. Two goals in three minutes. Conroy is 26 of the season. It's certainly his most celebrated. Just squeezed in. Jacob's free kick. Davis with the header. Not finished yet. Farrell forward. This is Conroy running free. Francis is waiting. It's a little longer for Painter. Ooh, not far away. Painter almost finishing as he started. Very hard fought game tonight. We expected nothing less and we're very pleased to come in with three points as you can see. Is that it now? Everybody will, will say you're up for definite. Well, if you look at the tables, we've still got four points to get to win the championship. So it's not all over, not all over by a long shot yet. The Burnley fans didn't altogether agree. They arrived at Carlisle in party mood. The Easter Bunny was there, so was the Easter Gorilla. They'd all waited too long for something like this already and they're all intent on enjoying it. I've just been up there today and I'm looking at all the faint, uh, the painted faces, the kids, the children, you know, with the claret and blue cross face and checkered faces and striped faces. You know, that's, that's, that's superb. That's what's, you know, that's the way football should be. But that's what it's all about. For me, they're the most, the best supported club I've ever, ever been. I mean, I've been in with four, four or five dif different clubs. 
But Burnley Football Club is the greatest for, in terms of passion and feeling and what they do. What an atmosphere here. I wonder how many of these 10,000 fans are, in fact, Burnley supporters. And here's a moment of panic, maybe. Good save from Williams. He had to react to that. Not quite got into the stride at all, Burnley. And they'll need to. Here's Thorpe. Dangerous ball. Everyone's left it, and it's gone by the post. And no wonder Jimmy Mullins annoyed. will look to cut into that famous right foot of his. Here's Deary. Harper. Francis. Still Francis. Oh, what a cracker! I said he liked to get it onto his right foot. And the celebrations say it all. He looked as though he'd gone too far out. No such thing. 1-0. Conroy's up, Francis is up, Harper couldn't get a touch, Conroy and it's going over the top. Francis ushering men forward, Mike Conroy will always show when there's a little bit of pressure need to be taken off the defence. They'll need some support though, Painter up from the back and Holmes trying to direct it back to the keeper and in the end O'Hanlon pounces. Nearly 2-0, it was aimed for Painter, I think Holmes was shocked more than anything, and in the end, O'Hanlon was the most shocked of all. Potts, oh, good turn, did well there, the substitute. Deary, not the most telling of touches, Gwyn Thomas, 1-1. Gwyn Thomas, his first goal for his new club, and it squared matters. Well, we've just had a little discussion in the dressing room there and we're, we're disappointed. You know, although we're near promotion, you know, as you said, um, we're still disappointed with the result. But, you know, we've got three games to get it right and we'll be starting on um, Tuesday at York. It just so happens that in the long history of Burnley Football Club, Turf Moor has housed the first, the second, the third, but never the fourth division championship trophy. Nobody who was at York to see all that change on April the 28th will ever forget that terrific Tuesday night. So many were there that the referee was asked to delay the kickoff. More than 7,500 were packed into the ground, most of them at the visitors' end. Outside, the wave was lapping the stadium. They'd waited seven years, they could wait a little longer. We used to be crowds, you know. Inside, the football had already started. Hey, your name's not Wegley, is it? The only Burnley folk who weren't in party mood were down in the dressing room. They'd set out on their incredible journey on August the 17th. Eight and a half months later, they arrived. And how? Burnley had three cracks at clinching the championship. They needed only one. There was a sense of occasion, sense of achievement in the air even before kickoff. While Frank Casper had started, Jimmy Mullen was about to finish. He'd experienced promotion twice before, but he'd never experienced anything like this. Jacobs free kick. Conroy. Far away. Conroy. Francis jumping. Right by McMillan, just wouldn't drop for Harper. Still Harper, good effort. Keely just got a hand to it. Space now for McCarthy. Williams couldn't hold it, and Blackstone puts York in front. Stroke of half time. Farrell. One for Conroy to chase. Stancliffe under pressure, put a hand on the ball there. No penalty though. There has to be intent, of course. It was certainly contact. I've seen them given. Conroy, here goes Painter, oh Keeley's lost it, Painter, denied by Tuttle, Deary, John Deary has equalised, Keely had a real swing at Robbie Painter there, it's himself he should be angry with, 
Painter actually tried to head it in. Deary arrived late at the scene of the accident and smashed it in off Painter, actually. There's a yellow card for John Deary. It's a small price to pay. Headed by Francis. Conroy down, Farrell can't find a way through. Francis maybe stopped by Keeley. Burnley just denied again. Francis. Conroy. Deary. Good while that one. Played about three minutes of stoppage time now. Here goes Mike Conroy. Still time for a winner, maybe. It's a terrific run. John Francis! They came to York in their thousands. They're going home as champions. Conroy, the executioner in chief all season, is the provider this time. And Francis bundled it in. They're under starters' orders. The pitch invasion will be off any moment now. That's it. Burnley are number one again. Up at last and up as champions. The trans Pennine invasion occupies the scene of the club's finest hour in years. They're going to paint the town. They're going to paint the city of York. Claret and blue. It's sing song time. I've only tried to carry on what we, what we started to do, we tried to do at the start of the season, which was get success. And it should be fair to the boys, they've, they've responded to everything I've asked them to do and culminating in, in winning the fourth division championship, which is, I'm proud of them, absolutely proud of them. It's good to score the winning goal in any, any game, but in a game like this, it's fantastic. You know, it's we are top the league, we are top the league. We needed three points to win the league, like, and we had th we've got three attempts to do it, and we're just all delighted we did it on the first one. King James the First of Burnley, and all his merry men. Saturday, May the second, prize giving day. Mullins' men received their medals before the final home game with Wrexham. It was a measure of their collective effort that the club's three Player of the Year awards each went to a different player, Eli, Davis and Conroy. But Mullen was the main man. When he took over, Burnley were in 11th place. The trophy was presented to John Pender and paraded to all and sundry. They took Burnley back to the top and they took them there in style. Only three other teams scored more league goals. More than that, they restored a sense of pride and achievement to a true footballing community. All, all hard work all season and we're just going to hopefully celebrate and enjoy it. Well, you know, it's a great moment, we've done well, but we do really deserve it. It was time to build an extension to the trophy cabinet. Oh, we knew we'd win promotion, but this is brilliant. Burnley fans started the season with high hopes, but they'd known high hopes to be dashed before. This season, all their hopes came true. Victory at Rochdale in the final game put the Clarets six points clear of the pack. Champions by a mile. Burnley were back. <laughs>